<laughs> Welcome to Roll Hit Die Presents Dungeons and Veterans. We have uh, we'll have an interesting game for you. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce our players, starting with you, Josh. If you tell me your name, your character, and what branch you served in. Uh, my name is Josh Hill. Uh, character is Chikai no Shi, uh, which will be known as Shi. And I was in the army for eight glorious years. Next up, we have Marcus. Hi, I'm Marcus Scott. I will be playing May I or other May I or one of those May I's. I get my character already. Other May I. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I served in the United States Air Force uh, for six years, and that's about it. Okay, next we have Bob. His lips moving. Nah, Did he mute? Don't have no sound. Did you mute, Bob? Oh, I did mute. All right, I'm unmuted. My name is Bob Vincent. I am playing Bayer, the Ranger. Sometimes he has delusions of grandeur, likes to be called Sir Bayer. Uh -huh. I was in the U.S. Navy. Sweet. And currently next is Fritz. All right, and I'm uh, running Sergeant Rock. Uh, I did uh, six years of active duty in the Air Force and then 20 years Guard and Reserve. All right, and we have another player who's not with us yet who will be joining us hopefully later. But until then, we'll go ahead and start off. Uh, all right, the sun is high in the midday sky. The only noise we're hearing is a roar of a crowd. but And the call of a raven as it flies towards a grand coliseum. It flies past the coliseum towards what appears to be a merchant district or market district where we see a young human male moving from stall to stall asking questions about a man and his associate. One would probably be covered completely in robes and a mask while the other fellow and Bob that would be you. You're the one moving around asking questions about the gentleman in your past. Okay. From your background? Right, right. Uh, yeah, try to find, find the guy that, uh, got us in trouble. Okay. So you're currently walking through the market asking people questions uh, as far as his whereabouts or if they've seen him. Okay. So if you'd like to go ahead and do so. Uh, looking for an old, uh, gentleman. To uh, maybe uh, seeking uh, artifacts, uh, they've been perusing the local uh, curio shops for wares. He's uh, got gray hair, wears a, a brown and dusty robe. Uh, have you seen any one of these? Is this a description? I'd have to say the uh, description doesn't match anyone I've seen here today. Uh, I'll tell you what. Maybe you could find out more information if you talk to Carthus. He's uh, kind of a information broker in the city. He's uh, about medium build. He wears a red and black leather armor. Uh, he's always, always wearing what is a plague mask so that no one knows what he really is. You could find him at the uh, Harlequin's Flail. I'm sure you'll get more information there. The yeah, Harlequin's Flail? Yes, it's a tavern just off the docks. If you will go, and the gentleman points, uh, we'll say south from where you're standing, um, about two blocks down that way, and take a left, and the flail will be on the corner. You, you can't miss it. And this, uh, this gentleman's name that I'm, I'm thinking, what is it again? His name is Karthas. And that'd be uh, K-A-R-T-H-A-S. Okay. 
Was I will uh, thank thank the man for uh, his help and uh, hit that right. What's the name of the place? Harlequin's Flail. You said it was by the docks. Correct. Now, once Veor is sent towards Carthas, our raven friend flies up towards the window of an upstairs room of the tavern called the Harlequin's Flail. The inn is a grand, half-timbered building with a tile mosaic floor. The accommodations consist of several large rooms with beds of woolen mattress with with woolen mattresses. The innkeeper. Uh, we don't worry, worry about the innkeeper yet. What we're going to worry about is the gentleman that we've noticed wearing red and black arm, uh, leather armor and a plague mask. He's talking with another gentleman who appears to be. What uh, describe yourself there, Sergeant Rock? Sergeant Rock. He uh, is wearing just regular brown clothes, pretty heavy. He's got a, a helmet on all the time. He's carrying a staff. It's kind of carved weird. It's a lighter at one end, and at the other end, it's not quite a point. It's kind of cut off. It's got a little thing sticking out in the middle of it. Looks like you could grab there or something like that. And then a little ring below that. And he's looking around with that squinty-eyed look, you know, that Clint Eastwood has. So, Mr. Rock, you've been doing well. You've been doing well for the organization. But it's time that you return to the labs for more of those lovely tests Balder likes to perform on you. Now be a good little soldier and get on that ship in the morning. Is that guy a representative of uh, the, the faction? Yes. All right, so these are valid orders. Copy that, I'm on it. First goal. All righty then. And as you leave, a raven that's sitting in the windowsill doesn't leave quite yet, for after a few moments, the human from the bazaar enters. So, I hear you have questions for me. About an unusual pair of gentlemen? Uh, yes, that's a gentleman from my past I, I seek to uh, reunite with to settle an old score. Hmm, interesting. So, tell me, what is in it for me to divulge this information? Uh, what is it you seek? Well, information is my stock and trade, so tell me your story, and I may tell you where you may f where they may have went. Well, I myself am somewhat of a dealer in information. Uh, my father was an archaeologist, and so I have seen many strange and wonderful places, tombs and temples and the like. Uh, I. Uh, expect to uncover uh, more of the same in my future. Hmm, that's interesting. Tell you what, they were last heard booking passage to an island called Orzul. That's O-R-E-Z-U-L. To the west of here. Oh my, and you're in luck. There is a ship leaving in the morning for that very place. She is called the Siren's Folly. Did we lose someone? No, I'm just getting a, an alert. Oh, okay. Do I happen to hear why, this? Why would a ship be called the Siren Folly? Well, I don't know. That would be entirely up to the captain. I guess he thought it was a good ship's name. Did I happen to hear that? that? That was the ship I was told to report to, right? Yes, it was. But so no, you did I not hear it. To hear that? By this time, you are uh -huh. downstairs. Oh, okay. So, uh... I... I, I thank Carthus for this information, and I ask him uh, what does he ask of me in return. All I ask in return is that if you find any juicy information, you bring it back to me. I 
will keep diligent records of, of uh, all that I see and hear, and uh, will report it for you. Very good. Safe travels. And okay, as okay, so uh, no. I would like to uh, ask around and see uh, what other people might know or uh, about this ship before I get on it, because I'm an untrustworthy character by nature. <laughs> and uh, just because one person tells me something is a good thing, doesn't necessarily make it so. Okay. So as you leave the room and head downstairs to our further investigations, we're going to move on to the next section. See, this time the raven makes its way towards an alley where we hear no drinking. And I don't think I have a sound for that. We hear commotion, sounds, sounds of trash and debris being thrown around. As the raven enters said alley, we see what may be a man in loose-fitting clothes. Uh, she, would you care to describe yourself? Uh, what you see is what looks like a shadow of a figure, clad in very dark clothing, uh, dark brown, green, black, but all very dark. You can't quite see his face because he is shuffling through the trash looking down but if you did see his face all you'd see is a mask um, uh, and two eyes uh, that look hollow and uh, devoid of a soul almost heartless and cold and that's about all you see you also see this gentleman chasing someone uh, looks like a common street thug um, what you do, though, is you do catch a glimpse on the forearm of the gentleman being chased of a compass with an anchor for with a needle pointing south on the forearm. Uh, let's see. Give me a... Uh, let's see. Give me an athletics check. was a 12. It's definitely a lot better than the three this fellow rolled. Are you able to tackle him to the ground? Let's see, where are we? Oi! I don't know nothing. Why are you chasing me? Looking for the man with the scar. I know nothing. He carries Scather. That's not what I heard. Tell me where he is. You might get away with your life. Roll me an intimidation. Thirteen. I'm telling you, I know nothing. I'm tight-lipped. You're not going to get any information out of me. I, uh, I'll get something out of you, even if it's your finger. And I'll cut off his finger. Uh, whoa, 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 Rock steps over there and goes... Rock's in the bar. Rock doesn't see this. <laughs> oh, I think it's coming out. No, you're still sitting in the tavern itself. This is uh, an alley about two buildings down. Oh. Let's see. So you cut his finger off. So why don't you roll me a... With his pinky. Roll me another intimidation, this time with advantage. Okay. Ooh. With advantage, it will be a... 14. He screams, bloody murder, as you cut off. Which finger did you cut off? The pinky. Okay. Blood. At least vital. Blood Most running painful. down his hand, but he bites his tongue and says nothing as he screams. What you did to me is far worse than what I will do to you. All you have to do is tell me. I have no information to tell you, and he spits at your feet. Just name or the place. And I'll break his other pinky. Alright, go ahead and give me another advantage roll. I was really hoping the last. Ah, there Nat we go. 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Does the sailor look Crit. anything like uh, um, the character from Blade Runner? Having all his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> This time, uh, apparently, you've 
caused enough pain, he's actually ready to speak. All I know is the boss is heading to Orzul and meeting some fancy caster. Orzul? Orzul. How can I get to Orzul? Ask around. I'm sure there's a ship heading that direction. I told you I'd let you live. I didn't say I'd let you walk. I'll give you five seconds to get out of here. If you're not gone, I'm breaking your legs. And let's check that. Oh, shit. He gets up, stumbles, and falls face first in the ground. Four. Three. <laughs> two. He falls again, trying to get up and move. What the hell? <laughs> One. He's got too much blood. And I'll break his leg. Okay, well, that time he got up on his feet just as you swing and hit aim his legs. So go ahead and give me an attack. All right. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, no, no, that'd be an unarmed strike. Not my short sword. Yeah. There you go. Oh, it's still rolling that advantage. Just take the first number, 17. All right, 17 hits, and you cause 8 points. Yep. All right. And uh, let's see. Describe the way you hit him in the legs. I mean, you s leg sweep, you're doing... Um, uh, right. just, uh, I'm going to hit him in the kneecap, kick him on the side just to break the kneecap so he hobbles off. All right, and you so hear I this. I take my. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just... Uh, I'll just, I'm going to do a, a, a quick kick to the knees um, with my foot, low kick. All right, you kick him at the side of the knee, and you hear this deafening crack as it pretty much bends a 90 degree that direction. And he hobbles off. So now, and let's I will see. go. I'll go look for a uh, ship and ask around. All right. So give me an investigation roll. Right in the middle, a ten. All right, it's uh, easy enough. You are pointed towards a tavern that you might be able to find the information at. And the tavern, of course, is the Harlequin's Flail. Now, this All is right. where he, the crow would fly off. So, we'll have to add that later since he's still not here. Okay, so, at the bar, in the tap room of this tavern, we find a bald gentleman of medium build halfway through a bottle of Marutka. Let's see. Maruka, of course, is kind of a whiskey type drink popular in this realm. Looking around the room, we catch sight of some other gentleman. We see Veyer making his way down the stairs. Rock drinking in a corner booth. And of uh, that one we're not going to have because he's not here. Let's see. And you're not there yet either. So, as the rather drunk gentleman at the bar looks around, we notice his appearance. Marcus, please describe for us Brother Maya. May. He's bald hair, big, bushy, red beard, uh, deep, dark, black circles around his eyes. Uh, kind of think of a fire tuck, but... The alcohol finally caught up to him. Uh, he's got uh, some brownish robes over his armor, and he's probably about three sheets to the wind right now. All right. As you're looking around the bar room, you do catch an aura, uh, an aura. You catch auras of colors of different things, which of course is uh, the near deal that we were discussing earlier. Yes. Uh, there's a gentleman down the bar. He's carrying a whip, and your eyes catch the glow of a purplish color around the whip. And you, you pick up the smell of rotten flesh from that whip. Being a keeper, you know that usually ind indicates, um, what was it? Uh, I want to say agony. Uh, yeah, smell of agony. So that whip, particular whip that he's carrying has been used for some some means to cause pain and agony to other people. Let's see. 
Let's see, see, this, the man seems to be wearing garments that mark him as a slave hunter. Now, this, unfortunately, the city of Bayer and the surrounding areas is still uses slaves that they acquire from somewhere, and they use them in like coliseums and other things. It's not a common practice throughout the realms, but on this side of the mountains, it is. Um, just as you turn away from the guy, your head starts to ache. A blinding headache, and you get a flash in your mind of a ship. The markings on it are the siren's folly. The vision causes you to jerk upright, and you knock the drink and spill it over the slave hunter. What the hell, you drunk? You drunk bastard, you'll pay for your disrespect. I... What you do that for? Why are you uh, knocking over an old man's drink? And knocked your drink over. You knocked it yourself, you fool. Why? Well, I think you might owe me another. I owe you it's nothing. I owe you an ass whip, and he reaches for his whip. I will grab his wrist and stand up and breathe heavily into his face. Okay, give me a grapple Why? check. Alright, that should be unarmed strike. Oh, are we doing uh, athletics? But Give me an athletics, yeah. and uh, let's see how, how you do. 18. He goes to move out of the way, but he is extremely slow in the process. You're able to grab him by his wrist, and you just breathe in his face? Yeah. Kind <sighs> or foul, nasty... I haven't been bathed or brushed in. Oh, you're trouble. disgusting! And he shoves you back against the bar. Actually, he tries to break free of that grapple as he shoves you back against the bar. And let's see. Give me another pose to see if you. No, he doesn't. <laughs> let Why, me go, you man. fucking drunk. I'll let you go as soon as you buy me a drink, you bastard. You spilt your own damn drink and you spilt it all over me. I'm not buying you anything. <laughs> uh, what are we gonna do? All right. Anybody else uh, in the uh, tavern care to? I'm gonna do an invitation. No. Oh. I'm observing. Did that guy actually spill the drink? Is he lying? No, uh, Brother May actually spilt it because he was having some sort of seizure at, that it looked like from your point of view. All right. Wow. And about this time, uh, we will say she is coming through the door. Well, so I, I see it all, or it all transpired right before I came in? It started. Uh, you see a drunk man holding the wrist of what appears to be a slave hunter and telling him he owes him a drink. And you caught the Sergeant, last part of what I said. Okay. Yeah, Sergeant uh, gotcha. is, is chiming in, and he's going over there, and he's uh, talking to the father and go, you know, I'm afraid the man's actually right. You spilled a drink on him, and I reckon uh, you owe him a drink. And who the fuck are you, and why are you buttoned in? I'm just an observer. I'm telling you what I saw. You must be a blind one then. Let's see. Uh, anybody else care to chime in on this? Not right now. I'm going to make my way to the bar so I can ask for about the ship. All right. At this time, I'll just let go his wrist and tell him that uh, Ezreal will be his judgment soon. All right, let's see. Have you continued to hold his wrist? No, I slammed it back at him or let go in a forceful manner. <sighs> All right, you forcefully slammed him back from his uh, from the grip, and at this point, he is continuing to reach for that whip. And so are his, let's say, you see two guys stand up at a table nearby. Like I said, you're going to pay for spilling that drink on me. Uh, Show some respect. I'll 
walk or stagger up to him. Respect. You mean you respect your elders, and I'll go for a backhand. All right, so let's roll some initiative. Anybody who wishes to get involved. I can't stick my token to assign the initiative. No. That's the same with me. Let me go ahead and get our tavern set up for you and bring you on over to it. I will join in simply because I don't think I'll be able to ask questions if there is a bar room brawl going. Ditto. Uh, this How do I roll in this group? Click on your token and then click on your sheet, the initiative block with the word initiative. You have to click on the word initiative. Yeah. There it is. Okay, word with token. Yeah, you haven't given us a combat tracker either. How do I click on my token? I don't. I see. I don't see anybody's so I just see the dungeons the veterans. Yeah, I'm not uh, put you on the map yet. So give me just a moment. You are a dumb cat. So, <clears throat> uh, as he is uh, pulling that up. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, one Navy, two Air Force, what did you guys do? I was security forces, basically military police. Okay. That's awesome. I was that was Marcus. Yeah. You were technical, is that what you said, Fritz? Yeah, yeah. I started out as a teletype clerk, enlisted, and then I uh, got my commission, and then I was a uh, software yeah, guy in the satellite ops. Awesome. Bob, what'd you do? I was a janitor, otherwise known as a deck seaman. Nice. I was a glorified gunsmith. Um, small arms artillery repair is how I started. Artillery, too? Well, repair. I got to work on the big things. The, 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 the guns that go boom. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, yeah, all the things that went boom. It was fun. Okay, so you've got the map up now. I see a map. Yep. And he's bringing tokens into it. Well, nice trying initiative. To. But for some reason, Sergeant Rock is not coming out. There he is. And we don't have a token yet for Bob, but we'll use what he's got there for now. Okay. And then uh, I know you're going. You're still in process of doing it. Uh, we'll need permissions to move them around. Oh really? Now I need to figure out why that's that way. Because I've given you permission when I put it on there, and I give you permission to adjust it once in your character sheet. Why it's not letting me do it now? Uh, All right, there's you. And I could move it the beforehand. Okay. Yeah, it's still showing I'm not valid token selected. Come on. There we go. Yep, there it is. All right. Okay, so let's see. Rock. Okay, it's taking its sweet time letting me do it, so I apologize. No, Rock says he can move his. It's true, it's true. Look, I'm over here by the bar trying to prevent a fight. Where'd the green come from? 
Okay, so Bob's able to move what his. Green? My screen uh, just went completely green. Uh, it's the left uh, you, uh, two orange. Your background, which is the green field, got superimposed. It became your front. You should be able to like to, to send it to the back. Okay, that's so our first close. mission together is escape prison. <laughs> Let's check this. So, just to make sure, this one right here no. is Brother Mai. What it is. And is this one right here is. That's Sergeant Rock. Yeah, this is Sergeant Rock right next to Brother Mai, right? Yes. So I'm already sensing that the Navy is already starting to pair up to. Oh, no, I'm be the Air Force. Air Force. I mean the Air Force. Yeah, sorry, it's not Army. It's 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 a different branch. I'm, I'm kidding. So but you can't have a bunch of military guys in a bar drinking. There not be a fight with the gal. It's almost like I planned. What kind this. of military is it? Okay, your ore, that's what the problem is. Your ore is like 30 feet to 120 feet. Oh. Right, that's my short and uh, long range of the hand crossbow. Okay. Hey, it's a handy thing to know. Copy that. All right, that's what's got the green screen all over. Is but uh, it, I'm, I'm surprised it's showing for anybody but me. Well, hell, I can't... Why can't I freaking... It's not letting me target Brother May. <laughs> Can you move your character, uh, Marcus? No, I cannot. Well, it's not even letting me target you to change you. Let's try <laughs> that. Somebody just got a red X on him. I had to... No, that still shows me... Yeah, you, you, can, you can change that at will. X, no X. Okay, no, I don't want to do your token. I already got your token. Okay, yeah, it's not even let me highlight your token. Let me go back and bring you back out. Alright. Why? Oh, I know why. Duh. there. I had you put on the map side, not the token side. So does anybody have an idea as to why it's not else? His is still showing that he can move it. All right. My, um, Marcus's? Yeah. I can move mine now. He can move it now. He's moving yeah. it. Alright. So we should be good. Everybody should be doing what they need to do. Can you move yours, Bob? Yeah. Fritz? Good to go. Alright. And I'm in. What the mm, bloody hell? By the way, Andrew, I don't know if you saw it, but he's on his way. He'd finished his tattoo, so he's on his way. He's in route. All right. So then when he gets here, we may cut away, depending on how this turns out. Alright, so our initiatives, let's go ahead and put her in place. That was me. Mm 
All right. So, Marcus, you have a 15. Marcus is Brother May. Oh, okay. So, actually did go through that. Okay, and she has a 16. Some good initiative rolls. Fair has an 18. Uh, my end, it kept saying you wanted to send the results. Was and to let's see, Rock has a 6. And you said he messaged, so I'll go ahead and check that. Alright, so... Let's see. Let's get their initiatives going. Uh, all right. So as of right now, Vayer, you are top on the initiative charts. You see this somewhat altercation at the bar and two gentlemen at a table nearby stand up. What would you like to do? Which are the two gentlemen that stood up? Okay, the two gentlemen that stood up. Let's. By the way, Dan, we're not seeing the initiative tracker. I don't. Don't have one up. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, that one right there. I'm trying to click it. So why isn't it working? This guy right here and this guy right here? Yes, he's two at the table right nearby. What am I missing? Okay, so those two. And then this is the guy that's in the altercation. Yes. No, like I said, I'm just trying yeah. to figure out why I can't do the pulse. I can move them. And usually when I snap that lets me do this, but I can't do that. Alright. So this gentleman here that's being moved. And this gentleman here that's I'll put him on that chair. Those two gentlemen stood up and are facing the commotion at the bar. They are you are at the bottom of the stairs and you are first in the right. initiative, what would you like to do? Uh, it's been my experience when an, is that when altercations happen in bars involving people, not me, it is in my best interest to exit as soon as possible so as not to be uh, involved in unnecessary altercations. So Bayer will uh, head to the exit post haste. All right. So go ahead. And uh, he will not necessarily exit, but he'll he's going to stay right there so he can flip out if he needs to, and he's going to keep an eye on the situation. So one, two, three. How far can I get? Four. You have thirty foot movement range. Six squares. Well, I, I've got sixty if I dash. Correct. Right. Maybe twelve squares. So I should be able to get right next to the door. So if I don't take any better. other action, right? Yeah, that works. Okay, and he's gonna he's gonna go there and and keep an eye on things, and occasionally glance out to see if uh, the local police are are gonna uh, arrive. All right. So I haven't been, had, my character hasn't been introduced to any of these other characters. He has no dog in this fight. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, she, do you have anything you would like to do as you come in the door and you see this altercation? Uh, yep, I'm just going to move right here next to this guy as he is, uh, has stood up, and I will push him back into his seat and say, "Some men choose. Some men choose." All right, so give to me... To advance towards the danger. And some men choose to sit. Your wise choice would be to sit All right, and so, watch. So give me two rolls. First is going to be a, I'll say a shove. So we'll go with what athletics on that. And then you can give me an intimidation check after that. 
Okay. Ooh, not a very good athletics. Five. All right, so you shove him in the chair. I roll a four. Okay, intimidation's an eight. Okay, you do not intimidate him, but you do push him into the chair. Okay. Darn, I was looking forward to having him crap himself. All right, so with <laughs> so with that, it is Brother May. What would you like to do? Uh, I he has whip in hand and staring at me. Yes. Uh. Alrighty. I will widen my eyes so you can see the discoloration in it. And let's see if this goes to you. Okay, I guess I can't whisper that. Uh, basically, an abyssal. Uh, I'll say out loud that be gone before I bring death to you and your entire family. So, and you say this in abyssal, you said? Yes, so I do. So I look like I'm kind of crazy, and uh, so try to do an intimidation check. Okay, go you ahead. get a pretty sharp look from from the sarge when you use abyssal. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and make an intimidation roll. Eleven. He just shit himself. <laughs> because I rolled You got a, it. You uh, got what you wanted. Yes, I did. I rolled a two. So, he is... Let's see. Wrong freaking mouse. Um... He backs away. He'll say, "To the edge of the bar here." It is his turn next, right? Well, you know what? He isn't even gonna. Um, he's gonna shoulder past you, straight to the door. And so the route he took was from here, pretty much that way. And why well, does have been turned back to the barkeep and or another round? He slides you another drink. You want to? Uh, you want Maruka again, or you want something different? I'll stick with Maruka. Daddy, daddy, give you Maruka. He slides you the Maruka. Thank you for not opening combat in my place. I, blood is so hard to get out of the wood floors. I understand. And this is my favorite place. And then we will continue with uh, the music, the mead, and the laughter. Now, do we have an ETA on our Dragonborn? Not yet. Negative. Okay, this I got you. Comrades doing anything else, or did they just sit back down? Thank you. Uh, they've turned and started following him out. Of course, one shoots uh, she a really shitty look as he walks out the door. One of those <laughs> next time kind of looks. I welcome. And so we will take these gentlemen out of the bar. As this guy goes and cleans his drawers. Lord the Rock is sidling up next to the uh, the guy who used the abyssal tongue. All right. And uh, he's going to note uh, that um, you know you really did spill the drink on that guy. I know, but he deserves death. He's a slave trader. Well, he seemed to be pretty demonic in nature. <clears throat> I notice you, you like the use. Of the abyssal tongue. I use several languages. 
Yeah, well, I've talked to with Celestialese because he knows it's Celestial, so you wouldn't happen to know the uh, language of the Holy. I do, and I'll introduce myself. In Celestial? I'll introduce myself in Celestial and ask you how your day's been going. Uh, I'm the Sarge. I'm surprised that they're using both tongues in the same minute. Doesn't burn your tongue. I am, well, I was one of the Keeper of the Near, and being a cleric of Ezreal, I know both life and death. What's a Keeper of the Near? We seek to keep balance in life make sure it never sways one way or the other. Uh, now, Sergeant Rock, what kind of person are you? Well, he's not particularly smart or wise, but he's been trained by the Army on uh, the ways of, ways of good and bad, and he's disciplined. And uh, he likes to not see a lot of, of uh, chaos unless it's necessary for combat. Okay, so Brother May, in your in your senses, uh, Sergeant Rock kind of smells like flowing water. Yeah, he's neutral good. Okay. So he's the balance. I can't recall the color to tell you on that one, but you can get a, a smell of like flowing water from him. Hmm. Now, uh, are the two gentlemen that are in the uh, tavern at the moment? What would you like to do? We'll say. She, you're up. I moved Dex to the bar. Barkeep. I'm oh, looking yes. for a ship that's headed to Orzul. To where? Where are you Orzul. trying to get to? Orzul, okay. Um, from my understanding, there is a small coach leaving from the docks tomorrow morning. And I'm Do sure I mispronounced the, the hell out of that. Oh, yes, yes, it's called the Siren's Folly. She's not a very large ship. Siren's more Folly. Of, more of a fast run cargo. Carries light cargo and people, if the price is right. The bar, you hear the sergeant. Roll me a perception. Do you know the captain's name? Ah, uh, the captain. Yes, I do have the captain's name. Where is the captain's name? <laughs> so the sergeant pipes up with his no, That's why I asked you. And tunes in. Can I hear this? Because I'm thinking similar information. You know, that I did have the captain's name. Where the hell did I put it? Again, that's why I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me just a moment. I've got to find it. I had it written down here. Take your time. Uh, well, anyway, while he's looking, you know what? Sarge pipes I up. don't know the captain's name man. because I don't and need a ship. <laughs> I'll be shipping out <laughs> because you don't know the ship. I don't need the ship. I just know the ship. Uh, I do can tell you a captain's name. I can tell you the captain is a lass. She, uh, let's see, what is she? A half, half elven woman. And I had her name, but you'll have to give me a moment to find it. Is she here in the bar? No, she is not in the bar. Matter of fact, she refuses to enter my establishment. Too many ruffians. I look right at Brother May I. Yes. Now, the oh, perception check, you rolled... You didn't roll. Did you want to try to perceive that conversation? Oh, is that me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, the sergeant's yeah. trying to... See if he picks up on that, that one word... You do hear the name of the ship mentioned. Well, uh, uh, she's not there, here, and she doesn't like your establishment. I'll be setting sail on the ship. She tends to stay on her own ship. Doesn't bother coming here. I'm sure if you ask around, there might be some of her lads here in the establishment, and they can give you her name. Oh, I don't know the captain's name. Um, shipping out on her ship tomorrow. Okay, the gentleman at the end of the bar chimes up and tells you that. 
Can you know where the ship is? I haven't been down to the docks yet, but I know there's the ship I'm on. So if you can point me to the docks, I gotta go secure passage. Well, heck, I'll uh, just take you on down there, because I gotta do the same. All right. That's fine. So, Vayer, what are you doing while these gentlemen have struck up a conversation? Um, I rolled a perception check. Do I hear any of this? I am seeking information on that particular ship, so I would... See, I would with a 14... Ship name. Are you guys trying to be quiet about this now, that you've discussed it between the two of you? No, I'm basically calling it. No, I'm not trying to be... Then, no. yes, you did hear it. So, uh... I Hey, hello. I also am seeking uh, information and possibly passage of the uh, Siren's Folly. Uh, may I accompany you, gentlemen? Why don't you join us? Yeah, we'll walk on down together. Uh, really quickly, uh, what are you wearing uh, clothing-wise? What do you guys have on, specifically on your your hands, your arms and your hands? Are they covered or can, they, can I see them? Uh... Hands are, uh, are bare, but arms are, uh, and legs are covered by a uh, loose robe, such as okay. you would wear in, in arid region. Okay. Rock is wearing a Fritz. uniform. Okay. Um, then I'm going to look at both of you since you're talking to me, and I'm going to say either of you have a tattoo of a compass on your arm or hand. No tattoos here, bud. I'm surprised. Uh, I, don't, I don't trust anybody putting needles in my skin. Thank you very much. That's fine. I'll go with you then. All right. So, are all four of you planning to travel together towards the docks? That is the name of the ship I saw in my vision, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I will stumble and fall behind. Oh, guys, look, we got a guy who speaks uh, Abyssal following us. On the bright side, he speaks Celestial, too, so... Don't know what to make of him. Uh, okay. <laughs> language is just a language. It's used for communication. Yeah, folks who speak Abyssal tend to be evil. Okay. Uh, they tend to want to communicate good. with uh, the evil. Wanting to talk to it doesn't you know, necessarily mean you're aligned with it. Maybe so. Might, might be, might seen, be a, a favorite enemy. I've seen that a man's actions dictate whether or not he's evil, not the language he speaks. So as we're headed down to the docks, I assume it's at least a 10 minute walk? At least. Well, that is when I uh, tell my, my comrades some interesting tales about uh, the uh, D-Day landings. And although they're confusing and don't really mean much, everybody gets four temp hit points out of it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you get your inspiring leader, you get your four extra hit points, and you guys are hearing this crazy story of these machines that would pull up on the beach and men would get out and they'd fire these weapons that you've never heard of before. And in the background, you hear this music, doo, 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 like from uh, Patton. And you put your hand into it, <laughs> and then a few minutes before it was your best man's face, <clears throat> you'll know what to do. Now, this is completely confusing because none of this has matched anything any of you guys have any knowledge of whatsoever. But it's magical, so it's still inspirational. Yes, <laughs> still inspirational. You still get your four points. Now, as you guys are making your way towards the docks, you do get to the docks and you see a ship being loaded with cargo, and it is indeed the Siren's Folly. There is a short, white-haired gentleman with blue eyes, seems to be wearing blue robes, standing at the gangplank, pointing, pointing to directing the gentleman where to go. Yes, you'd go that way with that crate. You go over there. Hey, you, be careful that one. It's breakable. Uh, well, the yeah, captain. You walk right up to that guy. There you go. We're looking for passage on the old, uh, the old falling here. We wouldn't happen to know who we see for the who's the purser for this ship. 
Well, you need to book passage. Let's see. Um, he grabs. He looks at a clipboard he has in front of him. Is oh yes. Um, have you already booked passage, or do you need to? Well, uh, you may have me on that roster. I was told to report here like it was already bought. So you got a guy named Sergeant Rock on your roster there. Actually, we do, and you're due to report in the morning. That's when we will set sail. Uh, the rest of you gentlemen, have you already purchased a uh, ticket, or a booked passage, or do you wish to do so now? Uh, I'd like to talk to the captain. The captain is in her quarters, and she wishes not to be disturbed until we set off. Does she have a representative? What is passage? Let's see, we are traveling from here to Orzul. I believe the passage price was two gold. Per head, of course, not as a group. No group discounts on this ship. Do I still traveling with the group? Why, you with the group? Just because I walked with someone doesn't mean I'm with them. A man walks many paths, as do others. Very true. I ride a ship full of dullards, but uh, here I am. So, that'll be too cold if you wish to book passage for tomorrow morning. It's fine. You're saying that the uh, Tyrus Quality is a ship cruising by dullards? In my opinion, they are. He is seems the uh, captain also a dullard? Oh no, the captain and myself are the only ones who are not dullards. But you can't get good help. Well, what these is your guys. name? My name is Dole. D O L E. And what is the captain's name? Would be so kind. Mm, the good captain's name is Borgia. B O R G G A. And I guess this would be the first mate of Figgy you would be correct, sir. Would working on the ship lessen the cost, or is work expected from those who travel? We might be able to make an arrangement if uh, you're looking to sign on until we get to Orozul. Is that what you'd like to do? I've worked before and have no desire to sit on my laurels. Okay, very good. So I will send you to the quartermaster, and you can speak with him. I also would seek to uh, to work and and hasten and ensure the safety of this passage. Very well. And uh, how about you, um, brother? May I? Uh, do I still have my emblem from near or? Y you do. Okay, I will pull that emblem out and that. I have mission that I need travel. They will take care of my payments. Mm, you do know, I sir, we're not in near and fall anymore. We're in Bayor. I don't know if uh, the captain will accept your IOU as payment for travel. Well, then. Do you need... Are you guys need of a healer, or... Since it will be several days, I am a brewmaster. Why don't you go with these other two gentlemen? Speak with the quartermaster. All right. You can find. Let's see. You can find Kushlo over near the crates, assisting them and loading them up. And that is the quartermaster. Yes. You ain't miss him. He has silver hair, dark amber eyes, and uh, he wears dark clothing. You should find him down the docks. I'd say probably near the warehouse. And he points down to the, well, towards the northern part of the docks where you see some gentlemen carrying crates on carts and such. And uh, you... Sergeant, are you going to stick around here until the morning? Go sleep in lavish comfort? What are you going to be doing? Well, I reckon I got passage on here, but uh, 
I don't know if they let me stay in my quarters first night here. I guess it's called a cabin. What was the captain's name? Captain Borgia. B O R G G A. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to go talk to Kushlo. So I'll ask uh, Doc Dole if I can stay in my quarters tonight, my uh, stateroom or whatever it is. We do not start loading till the morning, so there is no overnight stay. If you wish to find some place to stay, I hear the Harlequin has some rooms. All right, back up to the Harlequin then. All right. So uh, I'd like the party. to, you know, report to the quartermaster and help with the loading and, and mingle with the other crew and ask them about the history of the ship and and uh, try to get some assessment of, you know, is this, a, is this really a safe place to be? Alright, so you gentlemen make your way towards the, uh, now Rock, are you riding, wa riding walking with them or are you going to head back to the Harlequin? He's going to head back to the end. Get himself through. <laughs> Alrighty then. Splitting the party. What are those two, three jumping out again? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we will hold off on uh, Sergeant Rock for a moment and continue with the three of you as you make your way towards the warehouse district. And it, you don't miss it, there's a male elf with silver hair and dark amber eyes grunting at some people and telling them where to carry crates and be careful with them as well as the uh, first mate was doing earlier at the docks. Um, I'm going to walk up to him in Elvish and say, uh, do you have work? Uh, Dole sent us over. Are you competent individuals? I have worked a boat before. Very well. We have some cargo that could be uh, loaded on the ship. I believe we have two more crate, uh, cart loads full. Just get them to the ship without breaking anything. And then from there, I'm sure I can find you positions on board to assist in the run. Now, does he say this in Elvish, or does he say it in common? He says it in Elvish. He responds to you in Elvish. Are these uh, other people you with you? speak Elvish? Uh, no man is with me, but they walked in this direction. Like others, they traveled in the same path for the same purpose. And do any of the others, the uh, Bob and Marcus, um, Veyer and I don't Brother May I, do you speak? Uh, Veyer uh, uh, responds in Elvish that uh, he likewise uh, seeks to work uh, during this passage and will gladly help uh, uh, load the cargo. Very well, grab a box, and once we get ready to set off, which we will be setting off in the morning, of course, no one sleeps on the ship at night before we take off. You, Once we get it loaded, you spend your time in town. Okay. I'm still looking for feedback from the other crewmen on the history of the ship. And All right, so... Safety record and competency of the... Of the yeah. Give me an investigation check. Um, Marcus, uh, Brother May I, do you speak Elvish? I have no clue what's being said right now. <laughs> he tilts his head towards you and says, Are you looking for the work as well in common? <clears throat> I am seeking travel. I'm on a mission. I understand we're no longer in my country. Uh, but... I am a skilled healer and a skilled brewmaster, so I can keep those of the ship alive and happily drunk. I'm assuming as happily drunk as you are now. Aye. Well, I'm not going to trust you with moving any crates, but I suppose you can go speak to our cook. Aye. She's a halfling. I'll give you... Just go tell Dole I sent you to a spot to talk with Lala. La 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 la. No, la la. Just la, twice. La la. la. Alrighty. Be off with you. 
All right, and you uh, you start asking around. You got your investigation check. You know that this ship uh, makes the same run at least twice a week. No issue. Um, the crew has nothing bad to say about the captain. Uh, they do mention that that pompous first mate of hers is a bit of a yeah. well stuck up elf. But other than that, they seem to be pretty happy working for this crew. The ship is pretty fast due to the small speed. Uh, the ship itself, I don't know if any of you guys know anything about ships. It is what's called a ketch. K-E-T-C-H. It's a two-masted ship. It's a four-mast and an aft. Let's see. Small, fast, but not well armored. So they're not a battleship, but they do have a few cannons for protection. Okay. Would you gentlemen, any more questions you'd like to ask? Any specific questions you might want to ask? Uh, I'm also asking around about that. Uh, anybody seen the fellow I'm thinking from my past? All right. So I said with your investigation, very, very few people in the crew know anything about any of the uh, passengers that ride with them. So they have no information along those lines. Um, and one, of course, I'm looking for tattoos. Okay, so won't you roll me an investigation check as well? Got it. Same scenario. You 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 get general information, but nothing specific on what you're looking for. No more than you already knew that apparently the individuals both of you are looking for were heading towards the same island where the ship is heading to. Uh, All right, so what what do they what can they tell me about the island? I mean, what 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 goes on in this island? What's this trade and commerce history? Let's see. Well, we pretty much take um, food stocks and such from here. Crops that are grown in the outside uh, farms and carry them. I don't know why I'm talking in an accent since you're generally asking this question. Um, generally, it's farm produce and such is taken to the island, and there's only island-specific fruits and vegetables that are brought back. Sometimes uh, animals and stuff that may be hunted on the island. Let's see. Uh, of course, the last the city of farming community. Yes, the outside the city is a farming community. Now, the captain refuses to transport slaves. She says it's a despicable trade. She can't stop it, but she refuses to condone it and will not transport slave uh, slaves on her ship. So you know that oh. is also a commodity here in the city, but she will not. She doesn't transport them to and fro. Strictly uh, produce and foods. It's kind of a. What's good for that region is sent here for trade, and what's good from this region is sent there as payment. Uh, sometimes, she says, sometimes, well, not she, the crew does point out that sometimes they do weapons and other uh, harder materials, uh, textiles from some of the mills nearby. But you do get, I'll we'll say with your 14 investigation, you do get a feeling that trade with Orzul has slackened as of late. They're not getting quite as much uh, fruits and stuff from Orzul in the last week or two as they used to get. And sometimes some of the shipments they're getting are rotten before they get halfway across the uh, sea to bring it back here. Interesting. Okay. They do say the drinking is good there. Never saw, never saw the uh, advantage in drink myself. Eh, rum is always good. You got to have your rum. I'm sure it's uh, it's good for me for my enemies to be drunk, but I'm not sure it's good for them. Oh, I'm sure if you talk to uh, that. May I, guy? He yeah. probably uh, uh, spouse the uh, at length. 
<laughs> yes. The wonders and virtues of alcohol and oh. drinking. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I've, I've heard many many people tell me how wonderful it is. I just don't see it. That I, I, I don't agree. And with that... Oh, I understand. Brother May I, you make your way back towards Dole. Oh, you again. Yes, I was told I need to talk to La 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 La. La La? Yes. La La La. <sighs> this is going to be an interesting trip. She can be found in the galley. Do you need somebody to take you there, or can you make it on your own? Uh, down the boat and down the bottom. Right? Yes. Down the bottom. Alright, I'll start making my way up there. Okay, give me a survival check. <laughs> You're able to find it without much of a problem. You find you find a halfling woman. Where's she at? There she is. Uh, round face, blonde hair, blue eyes, and she seems to be wearing modest clothes as well as a, of course, an apron. And she's in there cutting up vegetables, and she's got some meat she's dropping in a stew pot. Hi. What can I do for you? Hi, I'm seeking passage, and I was told I needed to come talk to you, because apparently they don't trust me loading up the ship. Well, I don't blame them. You're how many sheets to the wind? <sighs> One, two. I, I believe you may be more sheets to the wind than you're speaking. Anyway, what can you do for me? Why'd they send you my way? I am just a cook. Well, I am a brewmaster, and I am a healer. Maybe I can do some broth? Or serve drinks to the crew? Well, how about this? Why don't you show me how well your brewing is, and I'll... I'll keep you here or I'll send you on your way. So why don't you give me a... Do you have... Uh, was it a brewer's kit? Yes. So give me... What does a brewer's kit end up being? Let's say... What would you use for that? Uh, I'd go with a... I'll say we go with the wisdom and add your proficiency. Wisdom. <coughs> now, so I'm actually give my plus two for that. Or? So it should be what a four. yeah. It added plus three. All right. But it didn't add. It didn't add the plus two. It didn't add a proficiency. Yeah. So we'll put oh. two on that. So it's a fourteen. It's not the best I've tasted, <clears throat> but I suppose it'll do for this crew. So why don't you go ahead and continue making some for our trip tomorrow, and there we go. We got a mapper in the group, huh? You have two. I'm a cartographer as well. Well, that's good to know. Ah, okay. There we go. That's even better. Just need to click it on the thing. <laughs> She's quite impressed, and there you go. You are working in the kitchens as the rest of you guys are loading the ship, and Sergeant Rock is making his way back to the tavern. Give me a perception check, Sergeant. <clears throat> that sounds like something bad's going to happen. Heads on a swivel. All right, so you do notice, let's say, two gentlemen that you saw earlier at the bar eyeing you and following you. They're trying not to be seen, but let's see how well they were. It's a five. Nope. 
So yeah, you see you're being followed, and also with uh, 18 perception, you notice that the people on the street, the two gentlemen, are not the only thing following you. You're also being followed by what looks to be a raven. You seem to have noticed it everywhere you've gone today. Kind of weird chicken. Hmm. Well, you can imagine he just, uh, he takes note of it. He actually looks right at one of his trailers. And then he just continues walking. He pauses for a second while he looks at one of the guys, gives him a nod, and then walks to the bar. All right, so let's see. All right, noted. I was actually hoping. Let's see where we're at on this. All right, so nothing new. All right, gentlemen, you guys finish off your day on the ship. Uh, loading, you got all the cargo loaded. It took you about four hours to get it all loaded up, stowed away. And the quartermaster tells you to go find your room and board in town. Enjoy your night. Tomorrow we set sail as the sun rises. Don't be late. And he leaves you to your uh, to your wits. The cook, of course, sends you on your way after you've created, let's say, two barrels of your specific kind of brew. And you can tell me what that is yourself later. All right. All right, what you gentlemen doing? Headed back to the only place that I know that uh, has a room and board, which would be that that tavern, the Harlequin, whatever it was. All right, so won't you guys? Oh, yeah. um, let's see. As you're making your way back, perception. We have Vayor and she. You both do notice the two guys in the bar trying to look inconspicuous outside the front of the Harlequin. But they take notice of you as you walk up. Well, actually, they don't uh, take notice of, of you. They take notice of May I as you guys walk up. <laughs> is one of them the same guy that I pushed down? Yes, he is. The only one that's not there is the one that crapped himself and ran away. <laughs> um, I will nod to them and continue heading to the bar. I'm going to stop at the one that I pushed down. And just look and say, prudence and passion. One will keep you alive. The other will get you killed. I recommend prudence. And then I'll walk in. You overhear him say to his buddy, Man, he uses big words. Did you understand any of it? But they don't seem to make any move towards you at this time. All right, so ignorance the way, will always lead to passion. When Sergeant Rock got there, uh, Mayor will uh, greet them and uh, say, uh, good, to, uh, "Good to see you again. I believe uh, you were in the tavern earlier." Yes. What's it to you? Uh, just uh, I'm new to this area. I'm looking to make friends and. Uh, Learn about the local customs. Uh, do you know anything that uh, I should be particularly aware of as a newcomer to this region? Yes, stick to yourself. I generally do that. Why don't you do the same? Hmm, I might think about that. Make me on with you. I've got nothing more to say to you. Alright then. So you make you guys make your way inside the tavern. So by the way, Old Rock, when he got in, he just checked into his room and went straight there and <clears throat> settled in cleaning his weapon. Alright. How about everybody else? Your room is taken uh, care of by Carthas because of the uh, organization. 
Uh, I'm going to go to the barkeep one more time. Barkeep. And you'll notice uh, this barkeep is a male dwarf. The last one? Yeah, the last one is a over overweight human, and he doesn't seem to be working the bar okay. right now. This one is a dwarf. What can I do for you? Just looking for information. I information might cost you a drink, lad. What are you drinking? I can buy a drink. Uh, mead. Whatever you have. Uh, just plain mead, then. All right. He reaches behind the bar, pulls this mug out, fills it up, slides it to you. So that'll be a uh, one cup. Here's a gold. Ah, uh, big <laughs> spender. You sure you're in the right place, oh. lad? For the information. Indiscretion. What can I do you for? Headed to Orzul, and I'm looking for a man. Carries a sword named Scather. Okay. As a Kid, describe this sword. As a Well, it's fashioned in. Uh, hold on, just a moment. It's uh, it's patterned after a legendary sword called Frederick, which is translated the final word. It's got a a garnet in the pommel. Uh, the man who carries it has a tattoo on his hand. It's a compass with the needle pointing south and he's got a scar through the compass okay, so I was told he was seen going to Orzul have you seen this man? Uh, there we go Hey, the description sounds very familiar I believe a gentleman of that caliber stayed with us two ten days ago now, if he should have set sail on uh, on his way to Orzul or not, I cannot garner that information. But I do know he stayed here. What was his name? I don't believe I caught his name. But he did travel with a very large group of individuals, all of them having the same tattoos. I've already run in one. I just need a name. If he traveled, would he have traveled on the Siren's Folly, or are there many ships that go? Uh, let's see. Give me a moment, and I'll uh, get back with you. I might be able to find something else out for you. Until then, would you care for any food? That should cover the animation. Yeah, I think we had a hiccup that I didn't catch everything. I said, I'm fine. I don't need food. Just remember, the gold that you were already given should cover the information that I need. Aye, lad, aye, lad, I will see what I can find out for you. He uh, walks over to a young woman, say... Where's she at? Uh, with uh, copper hair and hazel eyes. Looks to be one of the barmaids. Cover the bar for me, last until I return. And he makes his way out. Now with that, uh, Veyer and May I, what are you doing? Um, I'll uh, see Barkeep and ask about... Uh Lodging for the night. Okay, you come up, uh, <clears throat> you come up to the bar, and there is a young woman, like I said, with copper hair and hazel eyes, standing at the bar. How can I help you, lad? I uh, seek lodging for the night. Nothing fancy or special. Let's see. That would be, I would say, four copper for the night. We have several rooms left available. 
But you might want to get soon before the sailors come in and try to get them a place to stay. I'll, uh, I'll take one, uh, the one nearest the exit. You say nearest the exit? Yes. Always. Okay, well, they're all upstairs, but there is one that's got a balcony entrance. So that worked for you? That'll work splendidly. All right. So like I said, that'll be for uh, Papa. I'll pay the last, and uh, uh, would an extra silver be enough for you to send dinner up to my room? I'm sure we can make that accommodation. I'd be, I'd be much obliged. All right, so, brother, may I? I will go up to the corner of the bar where I was earlier. Sit back down. Uh, now, have I already, already had a room since I've been in town for a while, or do I need to get another room? We're going to say you're going to need another. All right. You were paying night tonight because, of course, with your particular, you got thrown out of the last one. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, Politely flagged it over the bartender and asked for another round and flagged a cup over for a basic room. Even if it's in the stalls, he's he doesn't mind where he sleeps. <laughs> Are you looking for a room too, lad? Ah, just a place to lay my head down. I right, would rather be here at the bar if it's all right. Mm, not really. It doesn't look good, but uh, there is a room available for copper if you wish to have it. I will take it. All right. So after about, yeah, sorry, I was seeing things pop up. After about fifteen twenty minutes, uh, you guys have your rooms. Um, you staying at the bar, drinking there, brother? May I? Yes. Alright, Veo, you're in your room. Uh, after about five minutes of you being in your room, you get a knock on the door, and it's one of the barmaids bringing you some food. Uh, Sergeant Rock, what were you doing? Just cleaning your weapon in your room? Yep. And yeah, we'll go down to the, the bar uh, briefly to just to say, uh, tell those guys, hey, uh, I could use a wake up call. Yes, a wake-up call. Yeah, yeah, just in general, I could use a wake-up call. Sometimes I'm a little, a little dumb. And then he goes back to his room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, after about 20 minutes or so, um, the dwarf comes back in. All right, lass, I've got it. Are you still sitting there at the bar? I moved to the table. I put myself. I'm. I'm sitting at the table right here. All right. He's washing a mug, and he looks your direction. And then he nods for you to, or motions his head for you to come towards him. Did you find something? Aye. You're wishing to know his name and wishing to know what ship he was on, correct? Yes. All right, let's see. He did not ride on the Folly. Apparently, he caught a ride with uh, two strangers to this town. One was wearing clothes pretty much all encompassing as yours are, but not quite as nice as yours are. He had this strange smell of rot on him. But he was, they, they carted, cartered, they chartered their own ship and made their way to Rizu. The gentleman's name, I could not find a definite name for him, but the name he used while he was here, no, I don't like any of those damn names. The name he used while he was here. 
And you said the tattoo was on his hand, correct? With a scar? Yes. With a scar, yes. What the frill is this? Sorry, my computer's doing some fun stuff. Oh, you're good. The name he left in the... He didn't stay in this tub. Well, he came here to drink, but he didn't stay the night. And the name that was passed around was Tranith. Do you know anybody by that name? I do not know anyone by that name, but that gives me something that I didn't have before. They said he was Lord Sharor Tranith the Hunter? Sharor Tranith the Hunter. Like I said, that may have been an alias, but that is the name he used here, lad. That gives me something. You've earned the coin. The two men, you said one wore dark clothes and smelled of rot? Yes. Or uh, one wore dark clothes and the other smelled of rot? The one who was covered head to toe, he wore a mask much like you do, but not exactly as nice. It was more of a... Well, I hate to use the phrase, seeing how this is the Harlequin, Harlequin's flail, but it was more of a Harlequin kind of mask. Kind of a... How to put it? Let's say half of it was white with a smile and the other half was black with a frown. His clothes appeared to be somewhat rotten and he smelled of decay. I don't know if he just hadn't bathed in a while or what the reason was. The other gentleman was kind of shifty, if you know what I mean. So I think all of the men that follow him are. Oh no, these gentlemen were not following him. He was here to meet them for something else and decided to travel with them to Orzul, according to the information I was able to garner. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. You've earned the gold. I'll take a place, a room for the night. Very well. Enjoy your evening, gentlemen. And we're going to take ourselves, we'll say, a 15-minute break for snacks, drinks, and bathroom break. And it also give Andrew a little more time to get in here before we move on, because his part needs to come up before we move on. Hopefully. Roger. Right. And four. Let's see.
right. Thank you for standing by. We are back on game. There's Marcus. Hey, there Marcus just pops up just as the stream goes live. <laughs> but I lost uh. Joshua. I traded Marcus for Joshua. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a big win. Well, I think on my screen, Josh is frozen. I see him moving around. He's a little blurry. He's grinning, though. All right, so is there anything you guys would like to try to do this evening in the tavern while you're waiting for the day to be over? Well, Sarge is just getting some quiet time in his room. Hoping there's no more trouble. All oh, right, I guess I'll go to bed before I start trouble. Well, let's see. All right, we'll go back and do this later. No, I can't. Can't. No, if we get too far in the story, I, I can't backtrack. Oh, uh, okay, so Discord is messed up for Josh, so... As is his imagery. Well, it says you're back in. Yeah, we're just not getting his, his TV show. Well, we're not getting any sound from him either. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so you guys, right? So the Delta here might have to. He, yeah, we just lost him on Discord too. So I'm using Discord on my iPad, and then of course Roll Twenty on my computer. So um, I don't have any worries about uh, performance. There he is. He's back. <laughs> but still, no sound, no voice. All right, well, uh, I guess we need to stand by for a moment while we try to get this straightened out. Uh, sorry for any inconvenience, folks. But technology, you gotta love it. I wonder if I noticed that. I just typed in the chat block. I see you. Marcus, do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Of course was chatting with us, so we just verifying he can still chat. Yeah. Hey, it's Josh that has the issue. Go lay down. All right, I'll be right back. Let's see what's up with them. Wait. Right. What? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we have some technical difficulties. Please stand by till we get it straightened out and we will return. <laughs> 